Hey everybody, welcome into our NBA TV studios. I'm Kristen Ledlow alongside Drew Gooden, Brendan Haywood. Now, over the next 30 minutes, we're going to run through 10 points on the Thunder. Could this Thunder team be the dark horse in the West? I don't know about that, Ledlow. A lot, a lot has to go right for that. A lot has to go right for We'll get stuff. into all that. We'll get into all that. You don't look like you're ready to answer either. It's a quick answer. Let me know. So Let no. me know. Let We've me got know. time. Well, the we former time. MVP Russell Westbrook averaged a triple-double for the second season in a row, but underwent arthroscopic surgery on his right knee earlier in September. So how long will he be sidelined? He was asked on Media Day, and he's already in mid-season form. Russ, do you have a timetable for your return on the court? Um, what did you read? Press release. What did it say? Four weeks. There you go. Right. <laughs> you sticking to that? Yeah, I'm sticking to whatever comes out. <laughs> so, <laughs> gotta love it. Be right. reevaluated in four weeks uh, after the surgery date. That, of course, is as we read. Uh, if he were cleared, though, it would be just in time for the Thunder's regular season opener against the Warriors on TNT, shameless plug, but Russ turns 30 in November. Will this rehab and recovery process be different than what he's seen in the past? Well, he has an arthroscopic knee surgery, so it's not like it's an ACL or MCL right. or something like that that takes a lot more time and a lot more recovery. I think once they go in, they, they do what they have to do. I think the rehab process would, will be just fine. He's not the average athlete, so I, <laughs> I definitely think he will bounce back quickly. Um, he's 30, but he's aging gracefully, takes care of himself really well. So I have no problems, no worries about Russell Westbrook at all being healthy this season. You said he's not the average athlete, more like human. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> I mean, Cyborg. Yeah, he's been in this situation before with a knee injury, and we were kind of in awe and amazed how fast he bounced back from that a couple seasons back. And um, like you said, this is something that's small uh, procedure. I see him especially uh, ready in time for that Steph Curry fade. <laughs> oh. okay, okay. Right. Well, do you think, though, that Thunder would be more cautious in this case or put him right back in against the champs opening no, night? I say no, no precautionary reasons here for that because um, you want to start off on a good note, opening night against the Golden State Warriors. You want to sit that night? We got Paul George in for the long run. I don't see him sitting. I see him being prepared. I think he plays, but I think there's a po depending on when he comes back, there could be a possible minutes count. Because a lot of times with the body, if you come back too early, you don't hurt what you just hurt. You hurt something on the opposite side. That's how the body is set up. So I, I could definitely see them coming out saying, hey, we want him to start. We want him to play. But instead of playing his normal, you know, 34, 35 minutes, maybe they limit it to 20 to 25. Just starting out, get him used to that because he's going to miss a lot of time in camp with the surgery. Well, good luck being the coach making the decision with Russell Westbrook. <laughs> good luck, Billy Donovan. <laughs> we will get to him in a moment. Uh, Triple-double for the third season in a row. We know he can do it. Will he do it? Well, we doubted him towards the tail end of last season. Why didn't? That... You guys may have. Yeah, we did. I mean, it was. Say we. Don't, don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm, I'm saying all of us because there was a point where we were looking over stats, and what he had to average over that right. span, we were like, there's no way. And for him to actually do that, I was in awe. And I mean, I think that triple double season kind of went unnoticed, and uh, people not talking about it. So I'm not, I'm not ever going to put Russell Westbrook uh, outside of contingency of actually accomplishing another season of yeah. averaging a triple double. I think he can get to a triple double. This is how, this is how astonishing. This is how great he's been playing the last two years. He has made us diminish the triple double. Right. Like, he gets triple-doubles now, and it's no longer a big deal. He has the ball in his hand so much. He's such a great athlete. He's a dominant rebounder. He's going to find his way into the points and the assists because the ball is in his hand so much. The only question is the rebounds. I think he'll get that also. So I definitely think he can do the triple-double for the third year in a row. Well, to the surprise of many, Paul George agreed to return to the Thunder on a four-year contract worth $137 million. Now, he averaged 22 points, six rebounds, and three assists a game last season. So when it was all but reported that he would go home to L.A., why stay in OKC? Here's what he had to say. Honestly, I think that was, uh, that was everything. The relationship I gained with uh, Russ, with Dre, with Steven, um, with Billy, um, mm -hmm. with uh, Sam Presti. I mean, those those was relationships that I felt that I've, I've known those guys for years. Um, it wasn't something that I felt like it just developed or it was a rushed relationship. Mm -hmm. It felt like I, I really had the time to lo know and, 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 and to know their families. Um, so I, I think we felt comfortable here, myself, my, my, my family. We felt really good being in this situation. And, um, you know, it, it ultimately felt like home here. 
And now he'll avoid those questions about returning home, about what's going to happen next. Do you think that that multi-year extension will give him the confidence to, to settle in to OKC? I think, he, I think he'll settle in just fine. I don't think it's about the contract. This is a guy that I don't think that will really bother him that much. I think knowing that he's the number two true guy. We knew it last year, but some games they had to try to work Melo in. They tried to figure that thing out with their new big three. And sometimes less is more. And it's not that Carmelo Anthony isn't a good basketball player, but now everybody in that Oklahoma City Thunder team knows it's PG, it's Russ, and the rest of us have to play around them. I think that will give him his comfort level more than the contract will, and it will allow him to thrive. So without that third superstar that you have to share with, do you think that the Thunder team, as currently constructed, could be contenders? Yes, I do. But it's going to take that and role players to really st uh, step up this year. I mean, the guys that they brought in, uh, they're going to actually have to do their job and fill in those shoes of actually helping and making this team a top two, top three team in the West. Because right now, I don't think they are. Um, you got the likes of Steven Adams, who I think is one of the top centers in the in the league. Mm -hmm. You got guys that they're just resigning re Grant. You got guys that just run in and Schroeder and a backup point guard. I think he's going to learn a lot from uh, Russell Westbrook. Uh, it might be a little chippy at first, but I think uh, they will fall into place and it'll be a good team. Chippy. I think that's the nice way to describe chippy. Russ <laughs> and Dennis. Both. <laughs> Very nice way. So, in his end of season press conference, General Manager Sam Presti confirmed that he would keep Billy Donovan on as head coach. He faced another first round exit. How much pressure is on Coach Donovan now this season? Anytime that they have to put out a press release saying that you will be back, yeah. uh -huh. that lets you know that you're on notice. People, yes. uh, people are talking. They think that maybe you shouldn't be the coach. Maybe you can't handle the personality of someone like a Russell Westbrook. And that has been questioned. And sometimes college coaches have a, a hard time adjusting to dealing with personnel in the NBA because life is totally different and what they do and how they manage players is different. Um, I think Billy's on the hot seat, especially after they lose in the first. They lost in the first round to a Utah team that was led by a rookie. They were supposed to win that series, and it wasn't even really that close. I think, I think Coach Donovan is the perfect coach for this team. And why? I think uh, Oklahoma City already has that college right. vi environment as far as the fans, uh, in-game operations. And the players and the personnel that he surrounds himself are somewhat great college players typical players it seems like they, they had good college careers uh, except you know guys like Carmelo Anthony who only did one year of school and Russell Westbrook in that same boat but to be able to manage all those personalities and showing that he was able to do it last year I mean they didn't have the best season but I think he did a great job managing the personalities of Paul George Carmelo Anthony and Russell Westbrook and trying to get them to play together. I think with that year under his belt, he'll be that much better this year. Okay, then if you both agree that it's the right fit for him, what will the definition of success be this season? Well, I think the definition of success will be how far they go in the playoffs we, and making it to the playoffs because last year down the stretch, they had to fight to get to fight their way in. The Western Conference is tough, and it didn't get any easier with guys like LeBron James coming into town in L.A. So um, I think they have to make it into the playoffs, of course. And then they're going to have to win in the first round. I don't think anybody expects this team to make it to the Western Conference Finals because you have the Golden States and you have the Houston. But this team should win a first-round matchup when you talk about two great stars, when you talk about Russ and Paul George. And I agree. This is a team, without a question, coach, players, the whole makeup, they will get past the first round in the Western Conference. You, you're that confident? I am that confident. They, they will. will. I, am I, think it depends, I think it depends on the matchup. I don't, I mean, yeah, if they're an eighth seed, you got to, I mean. They, they could easily be the eighth seed. I, I, I don't think so. I think they're higher than the eight, seven seed. I think they're more in the four, five, six range. Ooh. Middle of the pack. Oh, okay. A chance. All right. <laughs> a chance to advance. Well, fortunately, we're filming this so we can go back and check once the playoff seating. We might have to get a little dinner bet on that. Making a statement early. Holy cow! What a quarter by Russell Westbrook! Oh, George is smoking hot! Russell Westbrook goes airborne! George, oh, he's not human! Westbrook attack ball! Paul George is lethal! All right.
right, we know Russell Westbrook had a hand in re-signing Paul George. At the very least, he hosted the party where PG announced his decision to stay earlier this summer. Guys, now that these two are the go-to, how does that work on the offensive end? Well, oh, I would say now it's, it's, they're done from the, the, you know, the honeymoon stage of mm-hmm. last year, getting to know each other. I think now they're well on in the marriage and now pregnant. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Signing a four-year deal in Oklahoma City and Paul George. a baby named Larry. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the baby's a championship is what they're hoping for. But that, you know you have Paul George with you now as Russell Westbrook. And PG also knows this is a home for him. He felt that it was a void. People say, uh, why didn't he go to L.A.? Well, it's a guy named LeBron James who plays this position that is there. And LeBron James also controlled the market. So I think the smartest thing was and the best fit for PG was Oklahoma City. I think it was great for him to stay home, or not stay home, but stay in Oklahoma. I like the fact that he talked about the team, the guys, and that's why he stayed. Almost gives you that old school feel, like, like back when you're playing AAU just with your guys. As far as on the court, though, there's a lot of different things that they can do that I think can highlight their game. And once again, not trying to act like Melo was in the way, but now that he's not there, they don't have to worry about trying to find him those touches. They can give all those touches and disperse them between Paul and Russ. And I think there's a lot of things they can do offensively that, that'll help them out. Like I said, uh, we can demo it right here as far as the pick and roll. Just a, a, a quick side pick and roll. Lilo, can you throw me a ball real quick? Mm-hmm. Great pass. Good little oh, point thank guard. You. Yeah. Something like this, real simple. Where I'll be Russ, you be PG. Come off, bam. Screen and roll. Survey the scene. Quick pop back. Paul George opening the mid post. If he's not there because they sw- because the team switched it, now Russ dribbles it over, throws it in. Let's Paul PG go to work against a point guard. There's not a point guard in the league that can guard PG right. on the block. Kick it right back. They also can run the mid screen and roll. PG cut with right, you have Russ coming off fl- hard. PG once again popping right to that mid post area, getting it done. He can post up in the middle of the court. And last but not least, you have Russ with PG coming off a pin down. So Russ is live right here. Every, all eyes are on Russ. Paul's coming off that pin down. Quick pin down, flare for Russ, bam. When the defense shifts, Russ can get a wide open jumper or he can go do his thing. There's a lot of different things they can do as far as ball movement, body movement, that can get Russ and Paul George involved. And now that they don't have Carmelo Anthony, they don't have to worry about constantly trying to find a way to feed another guy into the system. I really don't think there was enough balls for Carmelo and Russ. That's why it didn't work out, unfortunately. I think these two guys will thrive now as long as they play together, play within the system, and those other guys know how to play around them. How about these two then on the defensive end? Well, on the defensive end, it's all about communication. Defense is about communication and team scheme and everybody knowing the right thing. There have been plenty of times where I have messed up defensively, but because we're talking, everybody knows what's going on. Guys are able to cover me. I might have been a little bit late, and accept, or I might have closed out too hard, and the guy beat me. But if I knew which way I was sending him, if I say, hey, I'm not letting this guy beat me to his left, and I, sent him, I made him go to his right, my teammates were able to cover for me. So as long as you're able to talk, you're able to communicate, and everybody's on the same page, defensively, these guys will be just fine, and the team will be just fine. Well, the team is now going to be without Carmelo Anthony, as you mentioned, but also without Corey Brewer, Nick Collison, Kyle Singler. They have, though, made some key acquisitions this offseason, including Dennis Schroeder and Nerlens Noel. So, guys, where do you see the Thunder ranking in the landscape of the West as we start into this season? I think they are, they have a the makeup of a team, but like I said, these new faces are have to, going to have to come in and mesh with the guys that already been there. They're going to have to figure out the system on the fly and quick because you have Golden State and Houston that already know their system like clockwork. So that's where you're behind and trying to get these new guys acclimated to the system and uh, going forward. And I think that's the job of the coach. I think right now this team could be as high as fifth, as low as eighth. Um, I think they fit in that, in that standpoint. And there's a lot of teams right there with them. When you talk about teams like, you know, the Portland Trail Blazers, Los Angeles Lakers, San Antonio Spurs, a lot of these teams, that some of them have, have a lot of shakeup. That's been the theme. Teams like the Minnesota Timberwolves, Denver Nuggets, a lot of these teams that have had a little bit of shakeup and things are a little bit different. You don't quite know where their chemistry is or where, how they're going to fit in. All those teams are going to be fighting for those spots. So I think they could slide anywhere between five and eight.
Well, when we talk about the defensive end, we have to mention Andre Robertson, who is going to start training camp as a non-contact uh, participant. He ruptured his patella tendon last season. At media day, though, he was asked about a return date. He said around December, but that he'd probably be cleared to play before then. Guys, he anchored that defense up until the injury. How big a difference will his return make on that end of the floor? It'd be huge because one of the questions you ask is defensively, how are, you, are they going to maintain? And he was a glue guy for them defensively. He was their Trevor Ariza for the Houston Rockets. I mean, he guarded the best player night in, night out. And when you lose a guy like that, and uh, you're going to be behind a little bit defensively, and guys going to have to make up for that. I think defensively he's also great because he allows uh, guys like Paul George and Russ to rest a little bit defensively. Paul doesn't have to guard the best offensive wing player if he knows he has Robertson able to go out there and guard him in, in his place. So I think that'll help him from a team scheme wise. He's always in the right place. We just talked about where you need to be for as a team guy. He's always in the right place. He's plugging holes. He's active on the weak side. Improved he's a three point yes. shooter. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but he's I good. Think he's in, he, uh, from his rookie year, I believe, yes. I, 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 listen, you, are, you on your own with that one, Drew. You out on the island with that one. I'm not, I'm not touching the shooting. But defensively, Rob, Robertson's as good as it gets. As far as the shooting goes, and, 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 we need the stat check. Well, let, 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 let me interrupt. Your, you, you on your own with that let one. Let me buddy. interrupt and ask about Dennis Schroeder because you did already mention that he has a lot to learn from Russell Westbrook, but what is he bringing to this roster? I think he's going to bring some more toughness. I mean, he plays with an edge. I played against this guy multiple playoff series, and you know what? Leaving there every game, I was like, I can't stand playing against this guy. <laughs> and, you know, he's tough as nails, and I think he's just going to compliment Russell Westbrook going forward. He gives them pop off the bench. He gives them uh, unpredictability, a wild card. And sometimes you need that. You need that guy that just comes out there and sometimes can go off script and can give you a lift. That's who Dennis Schroeder is. I think he'll be an excellent point guard and an excellent addition for the OKC Thunder. The Thunder ranked in the bottom half of major offensive statistical categories last season, including three-pointers made, three-point percentage, assists, and free throw percentage. But these numbers were still good enough for 48 wins and fourth in the West. So this season, guys, will the team finish over or under 48 and a half wins? I'm going to go under simply because Russell Westbrook might not be available at the beginning of the season. Um, when he does come in, he's probably going to have to work himself back into shape. And there might be some growing pains along that process. So I'm going to go slightly under. I'm around about 47 to 46, but I'm going to go slightly under for now. The Western Conference is tough. No one's going to feel sorry for you. So I think that injury might get this team out the gate a little bit slow. I'm going to be a little biased. I'm going to say under, but I think they had the potential to be better than last year. With the new uh, additions, free agent signings, uh, there's these new young guys that don't know the system. Once they all become healthy with Roberson and Russell Westbrook, I think they'll get back to that level. Could Russ win another MVP? I don't think so. I don't think this team is going to have the wins for him to win MVP. I think he's going to have a great year statistically. He's going to be excellent. But I see them finishing, you know, five, six, seven, eight, and I don't think that's going to be good enough.